How did you get involved with the Young Turks? Oh, well, um, I had a I had an hour's Comedy Central special called Citizen Jimmy, which was chosen best of the year by iTunes. Thank you very much. And the reason why I tell you that is because if I don't, nobody will. So uh, they saw it. Somebody who worked there saw it. And when Jenk got his job at MSNBC, he was a host on MSNBC, they needed guest hosts. And so they called me in and, and they said, hey, you're a political comedian. You had a political comedy special. Would you like to host? Well, I was ready, right? Because I had been doing my live Jimmy at door show at, or it was called Pop and Politics back then, at the UCB Theater in Hollywood. And so I was doing video work and I knew how I had, you know, so I was ready. So when they opened the door, I could walk through. And they told me, they said, I remember they, I'll never forget. They said, don't read the comments because everybody's going to hate you. They only like Jenk. And what I did the show Everybody liked me, and they were like, "This is amazing!" You should, and that's when they made me a regular host, and the rest is history. Did you ever ask them why they named the organization after the genocidal Young Turks from the Armenian genocide that basically created the Armenian <laughs> genocide? Just drag them further, and the Pasha and them. Like, why? Uh, I did ask them. They said they were going to call it the Young Pedophiles, and I was like, "That's not a good." <laughs> They'd be like calling it. So they settled the with the genocidal organization. No, the, the way the, what I was told was is which which is the public story that it means that you're a young like a Turk, meaning a an, uh, a rebel, a young upstart. An yeah, upstart. but that literally is a reference but to the Young Turks. And he happens to be from Turkey, and then he did deny did. the genocide for a while. He doesn't anymore. But that's so that's why that didn't look. Good. I'm, I'm sure they're very excited. We're talking about this. So it gives them an opportunity to make shock content for their audience. I'm all about like but retribution the, and like making the swastika great again. You know, the wheel of okay, life that, that, that the Nazis so, look, ripped off. But like calling it the Young Turks when they created the Armenian. Here, I don't understand that, Cenk. Like, here, here's here's what I think with the Young Turks. I think that they you've got young people entering the political sphere with no experience they don't know who Obama is. They don't know who Joe Biden is. And I mean that in the, uh, not like they've obviously heard the names, yeah. but they don't know what they did. And this this is a really great example of this is when we had Vosh on the show. I think, you know who Vosh is? Mm -hmm. He said, when I when I asked him, like, didn't don't you know about what Joe Biden did when he was in the Obama administration? I mean, from 08 <laughs> until 16, he goes, I was in high school. I don't even know anything about that. <laughs> And well, I don't blame him. This is how the Democrats operate. Yes. They target young people who aren't old enough to know that they're psych they're psychotic and evil yeah. and then say we should lower the voting age to 16. <laughs> so for the young Turks what I think happens is they've got a new younger audience, they're more woke, they're more leftist, they're very tribal. And if they go the honest route, they're right-wing conservatives now. But there is a faction of liberals who are tribal and have always been and are probably aging with them. So there, I, I have to imagine there's a point where Jenk Uger was sitting in his chair, sweating bullets, thinking to himself, this story's not true, but if I don't say it, we're going to lose all of our members. I have no choice but to say it. And then he does. And that becomes his thing. And I have to imagine it's psychological torture, but he's trapped in that world now. I think that's why he's become so angry and so like, ah, and screaming and yelling because he knows he has to lie to people. There's no way a person who runs a business like he does, who reads the news like he does, is, is unaware that he's lying. Because if you take 10 seconds, like, I'll give you the example. Donald Trump called white, suprem white supremacists very fine people. Never happened. I remember I was watching that press conference and he said they should be condemned totally. And I was like, well, how about that? And then the next day, all of a sudden, they're like, Trump called white supremacists very fine people. And I was like, what? No, he didn't. Someone like Cenk Uger or Anna Kasparian, if they come out and tell people the truth, like you mentioned with Paul Manafort, they're going to lose money. A lot of it, they're going to get attacked. They're going to lose street cred. So they opt for, I'm just going to say what the audience wants to hear. Someone like me at the time, I said, I'll tell you what's true. It ends up working out for me in the long run. I think for you as well. Right now, you've got crossover between people on the left and the right who are like, Jimmy's an honest guy. They, I either agree with his opinions or I don't, but those people are liars. This guy's honest. That's right. So I think people are starved for honesty, and so there's a lot of right-wingers or people who consider themselves conservatives uh, who find my show, and they're like, hey, I like this guy. I don't agree with him on this, but I like that, and this, this. and that's how it's supposed to work, Tim. You know that. Right. Like, politics is all about finding common ground. Politics is all about uh, convincing people to come to your side, point of view through the strength of your arguments. That's what politics is all about. And they try to, th so they try to d uh, discredit me, the Young Turks, by calling, saying I have a right-wing audience, which I, I'd say it's pretty mixed audience, but what, 
Uh, they go, half his audience is right wing, which means half of it isn't. Which <laughs> and means, that's a good thing. Which means I have broad appeal. And that's, they're supposed to make, that's not bad. That's what you're supposed to be going for. They're, they're bragging about having no conservative viewers. That, that's, they are. And so how are you going to turn anybody? So I get comments all the time also that I used to think this about that. And now I don't because of Jimmy. I used to think this, but, that, but now watching him, I think this. And so I've turned people's opinions on things, which is what you're supposed to do, which is yeah. what I, I want to do with this show. Right. I've got, I've got a lot of messages from people saying that I've uh, convinced them to oppose the death penalty. Of oh, my on me it. too. I did it to Jenk on air. So that's my. You get him to support it or oppose it. My proudest moment. (laughs) I swear to God, one of my. If you can look it up, it's still on YouTube. Um, We were doing some panel and we're talking about the death penalty, and I just very calmly, I started to question him about why you for the death penalty and why it's wrong, and and he was all about. Uh, it's okay if they get it right. But if they get it wrong, then it's bad. So he's against it because they get it wrong. And I had to tell him, no, just the idea is wrong. Yeah. That violence doesn't solve violence. Violence creates more violence. And why do you think when they do it, they don't do it in town square, they do it behind curtains? Because we're not fucking... Pro- I'm sorry, I keep swearing. <laughs> Let it out, brother. Let it out. I'm not they, yeah, dog. they used to do it publicly. Yeah, but, and, but they stopped, right? Yeah. And so Phil Donahue, another guy, used to advocate for doing executions in public. And they made him think he was crazy. And the reason why he said that was because we want to see what we're doing. You want to see what we're actually doing? Let's take a look at it and let's deal with it. Yeah. And then either we keep doing it or we don't. But let's challenge ourselves. Let's not do it in the dark. Let's not have justice. That's not how you serve justice in the dark behind a curtain. Let's talk about what, what it even means to be left and right. This is funny. There's a, there's a meme. It, uh, it said, or it's a Twitter post that went viral. People screenshot it. If you are on the left, and they describe you as a lefty, and you deviate on leftist economic policy, they don't care. That's fine. Okay, whatever. If you deviate in terms of woke ideology, now you're a right winger. It's funny, though, because thinking about that, if you're on the right and you lie, you're a liar. If, or I should say this. If you lie online, conservatives will call you a liar. If you are on the internet and you are conservative, they will call you a conservative. If you are on the internet and you are a leftist, they will call you a leftist. If you deviate from those opinions, they'll say, hey, your opinion changed. On the left, they'll just say you're right wing, you're right wing, you're right wing, unless you agree with with us on the tribal ideological issue. But if you you, you could claim to be pro BLM, you could claim to be, you know, uh, uh, in support of trans kids and all that stuff, but question universal health care and they have no problem with that. So I interviewed, I don't know if you know, but a big watershed moment at my show was I interviewed a Boogaloo boy. And now people don't know anything about the Boogaloo boy. Either did I. That's why I interviewed him. And what I found out, it was exactly what you just said. So this Boogaloo Boy comes on my show, and he tells people that the Boogaloo Boys were invented as a response to the Proud Boys. They're not Proud. So people would conflate Boogaloo Boys and Proud Boys. Because the media lies. And that's right. And so the Boogaloo Boys were actually people who were seeking common ground. They were pro-Black Lives Matter. They were anti-war. They were anti-cop. Um, they shake hands with Antifa. In vi- they, a bunch of videos. And they, yes. They marched together. They marched with that. So that's the video I saw of this guy, Magnus. And he had a Black Lives Matter person with him. He had a gay person with him. And then it was him. And he's a libertarian. And he said, we seek common ground. We're not your enemy, our enemy. And I was like, this. let's bring this guy on. I found out he was pro-gay. Pro, they provided security for uh, the Black Lives Matter protests. So they're pro-Black Lives Matter, pro-LGBTQ. Uh, they're anti-war, anti-cop. What else do you guys, This, this, that's five, four or five out of the top 10 issues I have. We can agree on, we can work on. They demonize me. Like, you can't do that. That guy's this, he's that. And I'm like, so I, I literally had a guy come on after I interviewed him from the World Socialist website. And he's supposed to be a union organizer. His name is Jerry something. And I can't remember his last name and you never heard of it anyway because this guy's never accomplished a goddamn thing in his life. And he came on and he started to rip me for interviewing that guy. And I go, Jerry, what's your message to that guy? This guy is being affected by the economic crushing from COVID, just like everybody else. What's your message? Don't you have a message to recruit him? Because if you don't have a message, the Nazis are going to have a message. We got to have a message. And he goes, I don't have a message for that guy. And I'm like, well, that's why nobody ever heard of you. And that's why you've never accomplished anything in your life, because that's not how you organize. 
You know how you organize? Just like Christian Smalls did at the Amazon warehouse on Staten Island. Now, if you don't know Staten Island, it's all full of Trump voters. And he's a black guy who organized a union of Trump voters on Staten Island. And how do you do that? Well, I'll tell you how you don't do it. You don't go to the union floor and go, who here's a proud boy? You're out. Who's a boogaloo boy? <laughs> you're out. Who doesn't like Social Security? You're out. Who's against LGBTQ? You're out. Who's who's a libertarian gun nut? You're out. Okay, who's left? Now let's organize. That's not how you do it. Everybody knows that's not how you organize. The way when you when people on the left say we're going to organize along class lines, they don't even realize what they're saying because what that means is organizing with Trumpers. That's and right. they say, we'll never do that. Well, that's what organizing along class lines means, moron. And that's why you haven't accomplished anything in your life except divide the country. Your neighbor's not your enemy. The military industrial complex is your enemy. Wall Street is your enemy. Big pharma, big insurance, that is your enemy, not your neighbor. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.